Hi, welcome to Five and Five Fridays, my most foolish venture yet. Five wines in five minutes is almost impossible. Um, and what I've chosen for you today are five Chardonnays that I have on rotation in my house that I love for very different reasons. So in bottle number one, we have the 2021 Giant Steps Yarra Valley Chardonnay. This is the blended vineyard Chardonnay. So of the five single vineyards, this is Tarraford, Wombat Creek, Applejack, Primavera, and Sexton, my goodness, I nearly forget the fifth. Um, uh, Hand-picked, whole bunch pressed, as they all are. This one in 500 litre French punchins, um, wild yeast, full solids, and 10% malolactic fermentation. The malo is really important because in 2021, Yarra Valley had a very cool and very, very high quality vintage. Uh, and it, at 12.5%, this has really wonderful taut acidity, which um, often Yarra Valley Chardonnay does, but it is certainly amplified in this, in this vintage. And that little bit of malolactic really does just give it a silky, creamy texture, a nutty kind of undercurrent, and it really offsets that really wonderful pert acid. So at $40, this remains extraordinarily compelling drinking um, from a brilliant producer in the Yarra Valley. In bottle number two is a producer in Pemberton in Western Australia called Piketty. This is the 2020 Chardonnay. It's made from Dijon clones. I love the way that Dijon clones express in Pemberton. I didn't know that I did, but I've been doing some tasting research and I've really come to that conclusion on my own, on my own steam. Um, I got a dozen of these about a month ago and I've got maybe three bottles left and I'm absolutely loving them. Above all else, this wine is extraordinarily sophisticated and sophisticated is a character or an attribute that we often associate with far more expensive Chardonnay. This is about $40, which makes it a screaming bargain for the quality. Um, uh, Piketty are followed for their Pinot largely, but um, this is fast stealing its way into my heart. I really, really love the Chardonnay. Uh, in the next glass, we've got the 2020 Nocturne Treaton Chardonnay. So this is a blend of three vineyards in Treaton. Treaton is, uh, if you've been to Margaret River and Gracetown, surfing um, bay on the coast, it's gorgeous. If you drive inland from Gracetown over Bustle Highway and into the east, that area is Treaton and that's where the grapes for this wine were sourced. Um, Julian Langworthy, the winemaker, leaves this wine in barrel, um, unsulfured, on lees until about November. It's like all of the others, hand-picked, whole bunch pressed. Um, it goes into a combination of new and one-year-old French oak. It's $30, people. It is so cheap for the quality that you get. I can hardly believe it. Every time I try it, I think, how can you do it like this? But it's, um, it's a really blindingly good value Chardonnay um, and exceptional quality. The acid is very tight, very tightly coiled, and I often find this is far better on second and third day. So if you've got a bottle, go easy and look at it over a couple of days. I'm sure that you'll have different notes for each of them. I just think that that's a class act, um, and it may not always be $30. Maybe it will. I don't know, but it's, um, it's on my hit list every year. Um, in the fourth bottle, we have the 2020 Domain Naturalist purest Chardonnay. So this is distinct from the Artus, which you may have had. Artus looks very similar in a cream coloured label rather than this silver label. Um, Artus is ginger clone, rich, powerful, voluminous, dense. There's lots of oak, there's lots of flavour. It's a wonderfully enveloping wine and it's very different to this. This is the Dijon clones from the south of Margs. It's spent uh, 10 months in 40% new French oak with a bit of batonage during that time. It's granitic and it's mineral and it's flinty and it's salty. There's salt bush and green apple skins and fresh curry leaf and this is spicy and a little bit floral and it's very different to the other two so don't drink them thinking they're going to be anything alike and even better if you can buy a bottle of each and look at them side by side you'll really really have a wonderful clear picture of the difference between Jinjin clone in Margaret River and the Dijon clones in Margaret River. Dijon in this case but in in all cases in um, with the clones has got a much more pronounced and more linear acid line. Um, they're tighter and they need a bit more work to help open them up but when you get a good one it's really exciting so i'd highly recommend you try these it's about 50 dollars a bottle um these two when i reviewed them last year um pre-release i purchased 
both boxes of both because they're just so good and I've loved how they've developed over the last couple of months finally in the fifth glass um, we've got a wine from Tasmania I love almost every single thing about Tasmania the people the place and certainly the wines um, this is by a producer called Marco Lubiana if the surname sounds familiar to you good he's the son of Steve Lubiana of Stefano Lubiana um, and this is from the Lucille Vineyard which is in the Huon Valley um, this wine is very distinct to these wines. These are like aperitif, acid-driven, taut, mineral, lean, lovely wines. This is main course. You're opening these at 4 p.m. and drinking them throughout the night and you're drinking this with main course. There's butter menthol and red apple skins and all these wonderful things. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do because it's going to get you first access to the new release videos that I release. There may be some coming up that you may want to know about. Um, otherwise, in the meantime, please drink great Chardonnay. Usually the, the sweet spot is between $30 and $50. That's really where we see the best intersect of good value and high quality. Uh, and in the meantime, drink good wine. Life's too short. <laughs>